Hello, this is Missy Evans with the Hartzell Area Chamber, and I am here with Amy Pace, who is running for school board re-election. She is in seat one. Is that the right way to yes, say it? Seat yes, one. And uh, from what I hear, she's done an excellent job, and we're looking forward to hearing from her today so that you as a community can get to know her more. And as you get ready to go to the polls on next Tuesday, the 25th, you will be informed and be able to make your decision. So, Amy, thank you for being here and making time out of your very busy schedule. To well, thank be you here. so much for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so, let me just start out by giving you a chance to address the community and talk a little bit about your background because, you know, people want to know how, what has prepared you for such a time as this. Um, and so if you want to talk about why specifically you are running for school board and if you're elected, what will be your priorities? Okay. So um, I've always had a passion for children and, and for helping others. Um, I have two children that have grown up in the system of Parcel City Schools. Uh, I have a graduate of 2019 and then my youngest, uh, she'll be a graduate of class of 2022. So. Um, just watching them uh, grow up and, and this wonderful school system that we have. I've always uh, been involved, whether it was homeroom moms when in <laughs> elementary school and, and doing all of that um, and just helping out wherever I could. Um, the opportunity came back in October of 2016 for me to join the Board of Education and I was pleasantly surprised that um, to be asked to, to go do an interview and um, I was uh, selected uh, and I have I think what prepares me uh, for this job I mean at the end of the day uh, the school system it's it's a business and you're trying to run it the best way you can you're trying to manage your your budgets mm -hmm. all that stuff and I think um, my job outside of being on the school board has really prepared me mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of the same things. There's just different roles, but everybody is, you have capital projects that you're wanting to do. You're trying to look at, you know, right now we're trying with the growth that's happening in North Alabama, uh, school systems trying to prepare for that. Yes. Um, and what do we need to do to be ready for that? Yes. You know, so that's, that's kind of a big thing that we're looking and, at right and now. And that's what everyone is, is right. working to be prepared. So I'm sure yes. your workplace is asking Absolutely. a lot of the same questions. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Well, um, what do you see, well, first of all, let me back up and say, so you're saying that unlike many of the other candidates, your first term was an appointment. It was not an election. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Okay. So this is really your first chance to actually campaign. It is. Okay. It is. Yeah. So I wanted to just clarify that. And then um, do you see any priorities, like that kind of that one thing that is maybe a project you've started and you really want to see through or um, just something that's been a priority to you um, as you're going into this next cycle? Well, what I like uh, or what I've, I think that where my passion lies um, is trying to provide an opportunity for every child to find their way um, and that they are proud of whatever the pathway that they choose. And so, you know, um, over the last few years, our career tech um, yes. school has, has grown and it's continuing to grow. And um, one of the, so, so I'm very passionate about that. Being, you know, at where I currently work, we, are, we have a hard time sometimes finding skilled workers. And, you know, they're good jobs. We need people to come back and, and fill these jobs. And, and I think for a while we might just as a whole, um, not necessarily just Hartzell, but in general, um, focused on that kids needed to go to a four-year college and needed to get a four-year degree. And and I just want kids to know that even if they want to uh, pursue a, a weld career, be a welder, work on HVAC systems, that that's, they need to be just as proud about that as um, going to a four-year degree. Yes, I so, so agree. So Amy, you, um, I, I totally agree that the issues that you're addressing in the workplace are so many of the same issues that are having to be solved at the education level. Um, so um, one thing I want to just clarify though, your first, your first term was actually an appointment. It was not an election. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. 
Okay. So this is my first time running for public office. Okay. Well, very good. So, Congratulations. Well, thank you. We honor you for that. That is uh, not for the faint of heart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so um, let me just ask you a little bit about, you know, are there projects that you were involved with in your first term or um, just maybe some priorities that have really been near and dear to your heart that you're looking forward to seeing um, maybe brought to completion? Or what are some of the things that are your priori priorities and motivating you to want to actually run this time? So one of the things is, you know, with the expansion of jobs in North Alabama, it also means that the school systems need to be prepared for the influx of people that are going to come to our area. And that's one of the things that we have been working on and <clears throat> trying to sorry, mm -hmm. <clears throat> figure out how are we going to, um, what do we need to do to grow our school system? Because um, Hartsville is, it's a very small community. Um, there's not a lot of land um, <laughs> available. Um, so trying to look at what, what how can we utilize uh, the resources that we currently have and even, you know, expand at a school, things like that. So I'm very passionate about that because I love our little community. Um, it's a great place uh, to grow, uh, to let your kids grow up and to be a part of. Um, as far as within the school system, there's probably about three things that um, I, I have a passion for. Um, one is the career tech. Um, I want the kids, I want every kid to know that they have a pathway and I want us to give them as many opportunities to try different things. Cause you don't want to go spend a hundred plus thousand dollars on a four-year education to find out that your, your child doesn't really want to do that yes yes you know um, <clears throat> so as many opportunities as we can provide classes to get a little taste of different areas mm -hmm. that they may have interest in mm -hmm. I think that is great and I love how we've also partnered with our local or uh, surrounding communities Morgan County and then Coleman we have uh, kids that go to those campuses for things that we don't offer and I think being in small towns like this, we need to tap into more of that because it doesn't make sense for everybody to invest money in things that we have at our fingertips, so yes. to speak. Um, okay. You know, so I like I like that. Um, I'm very interested. I love that for the children that do want to um, take some of the college classes while in high school. I love that we offer a majority on our school campuses. You know, I think. We take that for granted sometimes, but surrounding school systems, sometimes they don't have the ability to offer that and the kids have to leave the school campus and go to the community colleges or things like that. Um, and so I've always been, if somebody uh, decides to take their career path um, elsewhere, I've always encouraged and hope that we are able to find somebody that can you know, teach that dual enrollment class here on our campus. And then I think with, um, and then mental health, um, you know, for a long time, yeah. I don't think people, it was just kind of hush hush, uh, mm -hmm. didn't want to talk about it, but especially in times like this, I think it is very important. We need to focus on our, our kids and our uh, staff to make sure that they are properly taken care of um, during this time. And, and I think um, we, are, we have put more of emphasis on that and provided more resources even before this pandemic started. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad to mm -hmm. see that. I am too. I'm very proud of yes. uh, some of the partnerships that the school has, yes. has begun really as a result of the um, COVID right. um, situation, we'll call it. Yes. But, um, but I, I think it is a step forward. Yes. Well, um, let me just kind of shift gears a little bit. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about Board of Education governance. Okay. And I want to address that just because um, I want people to know that you understand what you're signing up for. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so can you just tell us a little bit about what you believe are the attributes and the behaviors that are essential for a school board member? Sure. Um, so for those of you that aren't aware, there are, there are five board members. Um, and our main goal is to support the superintendent and uh, the C uh, CSFO mm -hmm. and the staff, mm -hmm. you know, and to provide guidance um, and, and to help manage um, budgets, you know, um, make sure we're, we're 
staying within our guidelines that we need to and when we need to save extra, you know, things like that. Yes. So we, we have those open type discussions. And um, what I believe most importantly, um, one of the best attributes that a person that wants to serve in this role is being able to listen. Mm -hmm. I think you have to listen, you have to be able to uh, be able to listen to all kinds of input, feedback, personalities, oh, yes. um, dealing with the public, you know, I mean, you <laughs> I just agree. do. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the, the best things someone in this role can do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, taking all that information and trying to provide the best response and, you know, um, it, and guidance to the superintendent, say, you know, on what we need to do. Um, we have a lot of, like I said, open discussions where, um, and trying to, I think I'm screwing this one up, but uh, <laughs> I think you're doing well, actually. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just, it, you have to become a team. You, you need to have experience uh, in being part of a team and knowing that you are part of a team and every team member is important. Mm -hmm. um, I do think uh, at least having children have, that have gone through the school system, yes. being familiar, or if you have children in the school system, that is, um, that is very helpful because you, you understand how each of the school systems work. And every school is different and has its own personality <laughs> and, and things. And um, But, you know, at the end of the day, we are here to serve these kids. I mean, to me, the number one priority is these kids. Yes. And providing them with the best education, a safe place, you know, taking care of them, loving on them, everything that we can at yes. the end of the day. That's, That's good. Yeah. That's so true. That's yes. so true. And as a parent, we all want to hear that. Right. And, and not right. every child has the best home life. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I think we don't like to think that that happens in Hartzell, but it even happens in Hartzell. Yeah. And we've got, you know, that, that may be their safe place, mm -hmm. so to speak. So, yeah. So true. Yeah. Um, well, how, you know, y'all set a lot of goals and you have a lot of priorities um, that you discuss and agree on. So how do you measure... Um, the success and the achievement of those goals um, and how can you know if your goals are being accomplished and your policies are being implemented? So um, every year we uh, we go over what we have a strategic plan. Um, we go over what we laid out on it. Um, at the, we typically do it at the beginning of the year just to see how things have changed. Um, we talk about it throughout the year but uh, like I said in the last probably 18 months, two years, I mean, of looking at how we can expand our school systems to take the influx of people coming to this area has been one of the things that we've been trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. And with that, I mean, you know, everything costs money mm -hmm. and nothing's nothing's cheap. So it's like, how are we going to pay for this? You know, so we're trying to balance uh, those type things. Um, you also, um, you know, we want to providing as many opportunities. Again, that costs money. Yes. Um, you know, so it's a lot of trying to, you know, here are the things that we want to continue. You, you lay out the plan, how you want to go about it. And and we, we measure ourselves based on, um, so, so like when we wanted to implement the career tech, um, you know, we, we start, it was at the high school, it grown so much um, that we needed, it needed its own space yes. or more space. So. Um, at the junior high, we had some available space, um, moved some of the uh, career tech uh, over there, the office over there, and we were able to partner with the communities, and that has been such a blessing and uh, to the kids. But you, you measure yourself based off um, what you set yourself out to and then how you're meeting those goals. And those goals change. I mean, same thing that we all deal with just in our life. Mm -hmm. I mean, we think this is our path we're going to go down and you get thrown a curveball. Mm -hmm. You have to adjust this pandemic. What's a curveball? <laughs> you know, a big one. Uh -huh. Yes, but you have to change. You know, it took a lot of work, not, you know, more work than usual in trying to prepare um, to get ready for this school year. And the what ifs are. Mm -hmm so numerous but i think uh, dr jones and, and her staff has done a great job in preparing for that you know one of the questions i asked a city council person who had served before mm -hmm. um you know sometimes there's a misunderstanding that 
Well, you know, you show up for your monthly meeting because you all, is it monthly that you all We meet? typically have, sometimes it's more than once. Uh-huh, yes. Um, and, you know, that, that public meeting, you might show up an hour before for a work session and then you just go home when it's <laughs> over. But, um, but probably there's more work to be done. So yes. can you speak a little bit yeah. about what type of work do you do throughout the month besides just that public school sure. board meeting? So, you know, so yes, we do typically, it is one meeting a month. Sometimes, uh, depending on what's going on in the school system, we do have to meet more than once. But what we have um, implemented, um, or it's we've been doing since I've been on the board, um, is we typically have a work session mm -hmm. um, prior to the board meeting. Mm -hmm. So we can, you know, and it's open to the public as well. Um, but that's where we can really, you know, all the discuss all the information that Dr. Jones wants uh, that was going to be on the agenda, or it could just be in general. Like um, we're looking at implementing um, a different. Um, Trying to think. Of curriculum. Um, or yes, or know. curriculum, or um, even like. Uh, with the schools, hey, you know, we're looking at building um, another elementary school. Oh. Here's uh, just some plans. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing concrete, but talking about, you know, where do we think we could do this? How can we, um, in the meantime, you know, have little disruption? So it could be something on that scale, as well as just the every day-to-day -day things. Um, some of the things, um, you talk about what do we do when we're not, uh, at the meetings um, so you know um, one of the things that has taken a lot of time that you want to do your due diligence when we, we, when we hired the uh, superintendent mm -hmm. or the CSFO I mean you have a lot of applicants from all different areas and, and part of our job I mean because those are the two employees that directly report to the board mm -hmm. um, is why I focus on those uh, two positions but um, you want to make sure you get the right person for our school system. And so you need to check references, you need to reach out to as many people. We have to do our job mm -hmm. um, and making sure we're bringing the right person in um, that we've unturned or turned every stone over yeah. just to make sure yeah. you know, they're a good fit. So it can be something as complex as that or just, you know, I received a lot of uh, phone calls from people in the public, you know, are we gonna start school on time? Are we going to have to go, or are we just going to go all virtual, you know, mm -hmm. with with this pandemic? So it kind of, you know, your phone rings all the time, right, um, right. And but that's part of the job. So yes. it's, um, you know, you can be at a football game and, <laughs> hey, I want to talk to you about, so, you know, yes. you know, it's uh -huh. just, but that's why you have to, I feel like you have to have a, a servant heart mm -hmm. to, to be in this type of position. Yes, um, I, I to be willing. very much agree. You become... Uh, that face for the yes. community. Yes, very much. Um, all right. Well, and, and you already addressed that. How can how can the board be accessible to the community and to specific community groups? And I think you've already addressed that. Is just really being out there. Yes. Um, but anything else you want to contribute to that about being accessible? Well, you know, I mean, I think I can speak for all the current board members. We we are very much accessible. We want to hear uh, feedback. Um, we want to because that just will help us. Mm -hmm have a better school system. I mean, you know, there's always the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, but you, you need to hear all of it so you can take all the information and make the best decision going forward. All right, let's talk a little bit about some issues before okay. we need to close up. Okay. But, um, what do you believe are some of the issues that Hartsville City Schools needs to address, and uh, especially in its academic programs and offerings? Um, well, you know, I think it's, we could always offer more um, opportunities, more um, rigor, um, you know, things like that. Um, but it's a, it's a balance because everything costs money. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just go hire 10 more teachers. We got to make sure we can pay and keep them employed. And are there going to be enough students in the class, things like that. But um, like I said, I think I would like to see uh, the dual enrollment. I think that is a very good thing for the, the group of kids that want to or just want to get a taste of college. Is that for them? It is a lot cheaper taking a class here than 
going off mm -hmm. um, and you know they get the high school credit plus the college credit um, I would like to see us um, focus on offering more um, I'll just say that the hourly the trades mm -hmm. I mean I do think I think if you look as a whole um, in our country um, we are very short workers yes. and I think the more we can help push that and and if we can if our kids can leave us properly trained um, and if that means pairing uh, partnering with uh, community colleges or partnering with more businesses to help carry the load of the, the cost mm -hmm. I mean I think that is something that we should look at and continue to address mm -hmm. that's good so, you know, we really have it. We've talked a lot about addressing um, the need to create students that are prepared for the workforce, um, in which can look like a variety of things, like, you know, right. college education, that trade um, right. mentorship, and all of those types of things. But let's talk about um, the, the spectrum of, you know, what are your thoughts on programs for special education students? for English language learners, and even for our gifted students. You know, these are, again, areas that uh, yes. require a lot of money and funding and, yes. and creativity. So, you know, what are your thoughts about that? So, you know, as I stated earlier, um, I think every child needs to be given the most opportunity that they can. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, for our special ed kids, I want them to have every opportunity that our other children do and focusing on those and making sure they have the resources um, that they need so that they can because um, every child can learn mm -hmm. just everybody is at a different different level and um, learns at a different rate yes. but everybody has the capacity to learn mm -hmm. and addressing all of those needs and trying to focus on that um, you know the, the language the English um, English was not my, my favorite subject. Um, I'm a math person, uh -huh. but it is the foundation of everything. And I think you have to focus um, and put emphasis on that. And I think we have some of the best English teachers at our high school. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I think the math, uh, you know, when you talk about STEM, um, you know, focusing on all those areas as well trying to um, and I think we've done a good job trying to get the best teachers yeah. into the positions that can help all range all spectrum of kids I'm gonna ask one more um, kind of policy question sure. and then I just want to give you a chance to um, share with everyone how, why you see yourself as the best candidate but um, you know Hartsville City Schools is known for being among the top five schools in in Alabama um, and we consistently have been in some of those top places, but um, but you take Hartsville City Schools, and if you leave the state of Alabama and you begin to compare Hartsville City Schools to um, schools in other states in the United States, um, you know, what is your opinion about achievement, about academic achievement? Um, when do you think we're doing well? Do you think that there's room to improve? Um, do you think maybe our focus is too much on student achievement and um, you know, where do you what is your opinion about that? Well, I think there's always room to improve. I mean, even if you're if you're number one, you worry about staying number one, uh -huh. you know, so um, But I but I also think I, I've struggled with this um, myself and with uh, my two children uh -huh. um, I almost uh, sometimes I worry have we put too much emphasis too much stress on um, because Hartsville is in general is a very competitive mm -hmm. for you know small town we're, we're competitive in sports we're competitive in academics um, but I think um, could we improve yes everybody has areas they can improve but I think what I would like to see and I think is most important is us um, putting out students that are well-rounded. It's not just academics, yes. it's not just sports. Yes. Um, it's being able to communicate, it's being able to socialize, you know, taking care of our elders, you know, seeing, you know, family is, is very important. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, family can mean a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but just taking care of each other. I yes. think all of those things, and I think in general, we do a, a really good job of 
providing that to okay. our kids. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so could are there states that are doing better? Yes, but there's you know I think we are right where we need to be, and we're on a path to continue going forward. Uh huh. I do too. Well, um, as we're closing up, I just want you to take a second and talk a, a little bit. You know, this is your time okay. to really speak to the community and just let them know why you think you're the best candidate for this position and what differentiates you from other candidates that are running and maybe even other school board, present school board members. All right, so, you know, I have um, a little over four years experience um, on the board. In those four years, I've served as uh, vice uh, president and then this year I'm currently the president of the board. So, you know, and there's different um, expectations and that come with that. And I think what sets me apart is um, I have a very good working relationship with all of our board members now. I have a very good uh, relationship with our superintendent because like I said earlier, we were there for her. Um, to help bring this school system and continue. Um, I think what sets me apart, um, at least with our current uh, board members today, that I am the only one that has kids in the system. Mm -hmm. And and I think I, I stated um, in a questionnaire I was asked to fill out that, you know, I, I not only bring a parent aspect, but I also bring a board member. Yeah. And and there it's, it's just different. If you don't have kids in the school, sometimes you don't hear um, the feedback. And, and I'm glad that I met person for um, a lot of students and parents. And, and then I just care. I really care about our kids. I want to see them um, be loved on. I want to see them excel. Um, I want them to find their place. And I really want us to continue focusing on giving them opportunities so that my hope is that they come back mm -hmm. to North Alabama. That's right. You know, come back to where their roots um, because we invested a lot of time yeah and I want them to um, sometimes you don't realize that um, when it's happening but I think a lot of people um, as they grow older uh, realize that and that they'll want to come back and give back yes and, you know so wow. that's so significant that's true well thank you so much for being here thank today you. we're really excited about this process and I just want to affirm you and just honor you for um, what you're doing to um, go through this election process. Yes. It's not, as I said earlier, it's not for the faint of heart because um, we know that you've invested personal money and time and energy and, um, but because you have, you've made the process better and it's okay. been a, a really good experience so far. So anyway, thank you. And uh, we just want to encourage everybody to get out there and vote on Tuesday.